Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this series of videos, we will make a very simple kernel operating system. So without any waste of time, let's get started. So before starting off with the code, let's discuss about the environment we are going to work with. If you want to use Windows, you're free to use it. but I would highly recommend that you use a Linux OS or a Mac OS. I personally use Ubuntu and there are certain tools and features that are pre-built into Linux operating systems and uh, as well as Mac operating systems but they're quite hard to use with a Windows system. Using a Linux or a Mac OS will really help you out in the development process of an operating system. So I'm going to open up my file explorer here and create a folder called projects. And in that folder, I'm going to create another folder called KOS, short for Kernel Operating System. And in this folder, I'm going to open up a terminal so that I can create three files using the touch command. I'm going to create a kernel.assembly file. And I'm going to create a kernel.c file. And then I'm going to create a linker.ld file. Now in order to edit these files, I'm going to open up them in VS Code. So I'm going to write my kernel in C language, but it is not directly possible to load the kernel.c file into a computer. So what I'm going to do is write a kernel.assembly file, which would do some basic operations, initialize the CPU, and then hand over the control to the kernel.c file. So I'm going to use the grub bootloader for this project of mine and so I'll have to declare a few variables and create a multi-boot header so that the grub can identify a kernel. First of all, I'll create a variable called magic and its value is going to be equal to, uh, it's a hexadecimal value and it's one PAD P002. You just have to memorize it, you don't need to understand what it is. And the second variable is MB align whose value is 1 shifted by 0 bits. The next variable is memory info and its value is also 1 but shifted by 1 bit. Then the next variable is flags. And its value is equal to the or product of MB align and memory info. The final variable is called checksum, and its value is actually a minus of the sum of magic and flags. Now let's create a section called dot multiboot and this is actually going to be the multiboot header. Inside this we'll have to align the loaded data as multiples of 4 bytes. Then we're going to define table the magic keyword and then the flags and finally the checksum and thereby a multiboot header is ready. Next we'll have to create another section called .pss. Here we are going to align our data as multi multiples of 16 bytes. This is where we are going to define or initialize our stack because C code cannot run without a stack. So here in assembly code, we'll have to define the stack. So I'm going to create the variable called stack bottom or, a, uh, or it's a label in assembly code. And then I'm going to use the reserve byte function and reserve 4096 bytes, which is equal to four kilobytes. So our stack has four kilobytes of storage. Next, I'll create another label called stack top so that I can get an address, a specific address for a stack top. 
Next comes the most important section, which is the .txt section. Basically, any executable code is put in this section. Now, in this section, we are going to create a label called start. And this is going to be the entry point of our kernel. Or in other words, the, the start label is where the execution of our kernel is going to start. So we are going to tell the linker that this is our starting point and the ex code is going to get started execution is going to get executed from this point. So in order for the linker or any other file to access the start label from outside this file, we'll have to declare it as a global so that the start label can be accessed globally. Now inside the start label first, I'm going to use the move function and then take the stack top so using the dollar sign and then using the label I'll get the address of the stack top label so basically get the address of the top of the stack then I'm going to add it to the 32-bit ESP register which is the stack pointer then we are going to call the k main function it can be uh, you can name it anything the basically the k main function here is the name of the function of the main function that i going i'm going to give the kernel.c file so first of all i'll have to declare it as an extern because the assembler needs to know that the k main function does not belong in this file and is and it belongs or it exists in some other file so it uh, so the extern keyword will help the assembler to know uh, know that it needs to look for that function in another file. Now you can also name the k main function as something else. You can name it as simply main or a kernel main or whatever you want to. This is just a personal preference. After calling the function, the execution goes to the C code. But as a safety measure, by any chance, if the k-min function returns then i don't want the cpu to be confused about what to do next so i'm going to create another label called hang in which i'm going to clear all the interrupts and then hold the pc but then by any chance if those two commands did not work i don't want it to be stranded there so i'm going to use a jump function and go back to the hang so that it will keep looping until the pc halts so that's all for the assembly file of our kernel. Next, we have to develop the kernel.c file, which we'll do in the next video. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel and do like and share the video. It will really help me out a lot. Thank you guys.